and welcome to this design practice module 13. Uh, today, we would like to uh, just investigate what are the, the changes which have been brought in because of this new concurrent engineering approach. In the last few modules, we have been talking about if the whole cross functional team works together with inputs from quality, inputs from uh, marketing and sales or even uh, service or inputs from manufacturing, the design gets altered suitably to the most economical, most optimized design. But let us look at you know in the serial engineering approach when we started we defined certain paradigm based on which there was uh, a unit cost which was reported or a setup time which was reported how it gets changed subsequently because of the concurrent engineering philosophy. So, our problem example here was again about uh, evaluating three different options. We had uh, three different manufacturing options in mind. One was a turret lathe option, another was an engine lathe okay. and the third was the automatic screw cutting machine. And these options were laid out in terms of unit processing cost, in terms of setup times, in terms of unit processing time and process standard deviation. And we found out that you know these three options would have uh, different unit costs as reported in the, <coughs> the manufacturing handbook okay. and this was a data given by the manufacturing team also. Uh, different setup times which was like 20 minutes for option 1, 25 minutes for option 2 and 50 minutes <coughs> for option 3 respectively. So, the unit processing time that is processing time per unit uh, in this particular case for the turret lathe was reported to be about 1 minute per unit, 0.8 minutes for the engine lathe in the component and 0 0.70 minutes in the ASM the automatic screw cutting machine. Similarly, the process standard deviation which was recorded for these uh, three different options manufacturing options was 0 0.003 in the first case, 0 0.002 in the second case, 0 0.001 the minimum standard deviation or most accurate system accurate system was defined to be the ASM. So, having said that let us now sort of compare uh, both the serial and the concurrent engineering approaches. So, in the serial engineering approach if you may recall we had obtained uh, all these values related to number of rejects for all the three uh, different machinery. Um, then we also obtained uh, data related to the unit cost, okay, probably time of manufacture as well. So, these were recorded for all these uh, pieces which were supposed to be produced, namely about 1000 pieces which were supposed to be produced. And we found out that uh, with uh, a mean of uh, 1 inch uh, diameter and a process standard deviation of 0 0.003 inches. Uh, that is given for the turret lathe. In the turret lathe, the unit cost of the product which came out uh, happened to be about 23.97 currency units in this case US dollars okay, for the turret lathe alone. Okay. And uh, <coughs> the setup time which was uh, provided in this particular case was about 20 time units. So, let us say uh, you know this is in minutes, the time unit is in minutes. Uh, so, the setup time was exactly 20 minutes for the turret lathe and the number of rejects which was a measure of the quality in this particular case number of rejects uh, happened to be about uh, 400 and 65 units these were uh, the numbers produced which were defective. So, for every 1000 pieces of production in the transformation system you know you have to enter exactly 1465 pieces out of which 1000 will emerge out and uh, 1000 good pieces will emerge out and 460 would be the scrap uh, percentage which would get produced. Okay. So, the inputs were again 1465 outputs 1000 scrap units 465. So, number of rejects in this case was 465 units for the turret lathe. So, let us say we are evaluating alternative 1 okay, for the serial engineering approach 
And now, we would like to also calculate the manufacturing lead time here. So, let us just do that. <coughs> so, manufacturing lead time for the serial engineering approach happen to be again the total amount of setup time that is being utilized plus the number of units turned on turret lathe. I will say first option, okay. turret lathe is the first option times the uh, time per unit on the turret lathe. So, this uh, then happens to be about 20 plus 14 65 times 1.00 time units, which is about 1485 time units or minutes uh, in this particular case. So, the serial engineering approach produces with a turret lathe uh, a product, which has a unit price of about 23.97 dollars, rejects about 465 units and takes a manufacturing lead time of 1485 uh, units. And this is uh, the alternative which was chosen in the serial engineering approach. But if you look at the concurrent engineering philosophy, uh, you know we consider a scenario in meeting 3 let us say that reflects the uh, concurrent engineering approach. So, if we suppose that it takes about 0 0.70 uh, units of time or minutes to process in the ASM or the automatic screw cutting machine, we will have subsequently at 0 reject level uh, the number of good options which are there 1000 pieces to be produced in a very, very short amount of time. So, let us see that. So, when we talk about a concurrent engineering approach, as you may recall. So, in this particular case, we considered a scenario as in meeting 3, <coughs> which talks about uh, that the rejects are higher and something has to be done uh, for the customer to accept the, the overall quality level. And so, the team explores the possibility of using a more accurate machine that is ASM machine to process. at a much more accurate level. Okay. So, here in this case as you may recall the unit cost which came out was about close to again 22 dollars and a setup time particularly if, if you consider the ASM comes to about 50 time units or 50 minutes. Okay. And uh, similarly, if I, if I look at uh, the number of rejects in this particular case, the number of rejects were 0. Uh, that is how uh, it turned up and the manufacturing lead time which happens is constituted of a setup time again plus the machining time, which is the number of units on ASM times time per unit that it takes on an ASM. So, this happens to be then about 50 plus 1000 obviously, in this particular transformation in the ASM machine as emerged in the third meeting, if uh, the transformation changes from a turret to an ASM. In this case, you have exactly 1000 pieces input, 1000 pieces output with almost 0 scrap coming out. Okay. So, <coughs> that is how accurate or that is how precise this particular machine is. Okay. So, in this particular scenario as uh, we know the number of the manufacturing lead times came out to be about close to 750 minutes. Okay. So, if I look at from a serial engineering to a concurrent engineering approach this whole fact of reiterating uh, and some somehow uh, using you know uh, feedback from different sources and uh, trying to imbibe in the whole process of thinking the, the importance of uh, some uh, areas which were not considered to be as important in the serial engineering areas like quality for example. It helps us to resolve uh, the scenario and helps us to get into a situation where we are operating as you see at a much, much lower setup time.
okay, uh, uh, the manufacturing lead time. So, earlier it was 14 uh, 185 minutes and now it is about 750, so about half. Okay. And that also at a price which is more or less similar, it is the price is not changing much. You see 23.97 uh, dollars per piece was the price which uh, one could get on the turret lathe and about 22 dollars is the unit cost which could be gotten on the, uh, the automatic screw machine. So, in fact, it is for the better that the cost also is going down by maybe a dollar or so and uh, you are able to get at a much lower manufacturing lead time at a much lower cost a scenario where the number of rejects are 0 or number of the quality is very high. So, this happened because of the uh, involvement of several people uh, at the very outset and the design which is going to be a better design obviously, is going to include you know the same specifications 1 plus minus 0 0.0003 on the ASM. Whereas, at the outset if you look at ASM and if you look that the process is expensive, you find out that uh, it is not going to work. Okay. So, it is about a trade off again. In this case as you saw the trade off was between the number of rejects, if the number of rejects are lowered still the cost comes down and the processing time is lowered still the cost comes down. The question is what is going to be the decision of a company and this decision could have never arisen had you not involved quality from phase 1. Okay. So, that is what the benefit. Uh, uh, can be envisioned as when we talk about concurrent engineering approaches. So, with this I think uh, one thing is very clear if we looked at what are the improvement levels you would like to sort of see percentage wise what are going to be uh, the different improvements in the different parameters. So, let us say improvements in unit cost of the product the quality levels uh, for the manufacture of the product and manufacturing lead time for this product. So, you see that the percentage improvement in unit cost <coughs> is again about 23.97 minus 22 by 23.97 as about 8.21 percent. So, there is a reduction on the unit cost by 8 uh, percent. Uh, improvement in quality is humongous. So, the improvement in quality is almost I would say 465 defectives to 0 defective. Okay. So, this is more or less a total quality managed system with uh, very less scrap. So, 0 scrap uh, <coughs> in comparison to a scrap generated earlier and then of course, the percentage improvement <coughs> in manufacturing lead time is also tremendous it is 1485 minus 750 as a percentage represented as a percentage is about 49.50 percent. So, you can think of the improvements in the cost and the lead times okay, and also the quality okay, just because uh, you involved uh, everybody in the decision making process from the very beginning. So, there are very various other uh, advantages also that concrete engineering has to offer. Uh, one of the most important benefits uh, of concurrent engineering is uh, although not explicitly addressed in the very simple example that we did in the last uh, few modules. Uh, in many large development projects particularly uh, when uh, we are talking about product development, the major issue which happens is la the lack of communication between the different members and uh, that lack of communication can be resolved at the very outset. Uh, when we talk about a concurrent engineering philosophy or a concurrent engineering approach. So, <coughs> you can probably lead uh, yourself to extensive amount of engineering on the various phases of the product life cycle, when you are putting a concurrent team or concurrent engineering team in place cross functional team in place, because everybody will bring his own perspective on the table uh, related to not only just the design and the manufacturing phases of a product, but then you know related to the sales and after sales part and also to some extent even 
people who are uh, going to look after how the uh, how the product is. So, uh, up to the disposal phase uh, of a product life cycle. So, all the uh, associated experience is coupled at the very beginning in the in the design process, okay. Uh, because of which maybe maybe delays can be avoided. For example, that uh, let us say we, we just categorize it this way that in serial engineering approach, the shortcomings if we look at are first of all lack of communication. during designing. of a product okay, or uh, lack of communication between all stakeholders. So, who are the stakeholders? So, stakeholders are members of various part of the product life cycle. Okay. Stakeholders can be the design team, they can also be the manufacturing team, they can be the uh, sales and marketing team they can also be somewhere around here quality team, they can be uh, team related to <coughs> let us say the service of the product and even the disposal. Okay. So, these are the different aspects of uh, the life cycle of a product uh, before from, from, the, from the designing to the realization to the sales. And what you are essentially having in a serial uh, engineering approach is a lack of communication between all these different teams, which get resolved when we talk about concurrent engineering. So, the lack of communication gets addressed and so therefore, uh, concurrent engineering may result in I would say better engineered products, because of this knowledge that gets packed on to the product from the very beginning. Okay. So, may result in better engineered products or you can also record this as optimized solutions. So, we are not only concerned with the product, but also the solutions uh, <coughs> with respect to uh, the production as well as how it channels through uh, the to the consumer. So, typically if <coughs> you had this shortcoming, if you had the lack of uh, communication uh, in serial engineering, this leads to product delays, because at every phase when the product passes through, there is some engineering change or the other, which has to be introduced every time to the design phase. And so, definitely this is not a very good approach in the uh, serial engineering. Uh, strategy that some companies may envision. So, uh, the increase in time to reach market can influence various uh, aspects of a product, it can lead to uh, probably influencing the acceptance, the overall acceptance of the, the product, the market position related to the product, the project cost, overall uh, quality levels, all those things are affected very much when we are talking about the uh, serial engineering philosophy. So, these can be addressed quite well uh, and it should be on a firm basis that one should be ready to adopt to the concurrent engineering strategy. So, we will now talk a little more details about how do we characterize a concurrent engineering environment, what are the different components which are needed for uh, looking into such an environment and we will actually uh, endorse this through a case study, a case study which would talk about uh, the computer aided acquisition and logistic support. Uh, which was hired by the electronic systems working group by uh, the Cal C corporation, uh, which <coughs> led to a very structured organizational uh, nature and which led to this communication uh, increase by several folds leading to overall benefits as associated with the different uh, products, which were launched through such a platform. So, we will uh, talk about this uh, electronic systems working group report by Linton uh, and co-workers. Okay. It is a case study 
and in context of that we will try to understand what is going to be the concurrent engineering environment, how do you implement such an environment for uh, any kind of product complexity, product technology, uh, defining program structures, program futures, competition in the market and uh, many other parametrics like business relationships, team scopes, uh, resource tightness, schedule tightness, so on so forth. So, uh, we will uh, start working on this problem uh, probably from the next module and I would like to close this particular module, but in the next module we will just discuss this uh, case study by Linton in a more appropriate manner. Thank you very much.